On today's episode, we're going to be comparing and contrasting first-hand and second-hand accounts. We're also going to be taking a look at primary and secondary sources. Let's go! The verbs of this particular lesson are compare and contrast. We are going to compare and contrast a first-hand account and a second-hand account of the same event or topic. We're also going to describe the differences in focus and the information provided. Hmm, what exactly does it mean to compare and contrast? To contrast something is to look for differences among two or more things. To compare something is to do the opposite, to look for similarities among two or more things. Hmm, what is a first-hand account? A first-hand account describes information or an experience from the original source or personal experience. A second-hand account describes something on the basis of what others have said about it. An account is a report or description about an event or an experience. So what exactly is a primary source? A primary source is an original source or evidence that is an artifact, a document, a diary, a manuscript, an autobiography, a recording, or any other source of information that was created at a certain time. Secondary sources are accounts written after an event that utilizes hindsight. What is hindsight? Hindsight is when you look back upon something. They are interpretations and evaluations of primary sources. Secondary sources are not evidence, but rather commentary on and discussion of evidence. Examples of secondary sources include bibliographies, biographical works, commentaries, criticisms, dictionaries, encyclopedias, histories, journal articles, and magazine and newspaper articles as well. Now it's time to put our knowledge into action. Let's take a look at first-hand accounts, second-hand accounts, and primary and secondary sources about Toussaint Charbonneau. What do you know about Toussaint Charbonneau? Well, this is what William Clark knows. Fourth of November, a Frenchman named Charbonneau, who speaks the Big Belly language, visit us. He wished to hire and informed us his two squares were snake Indians. We engow him to go on with us and take one of his wives to interpret the snake language. The Indians, horses, and dogs live in the same lodge with themselves. William Clark. He, Charbonneau, was sorry for his foolish part he had acted, and if we pleased, he would accompany us agreeably to the terms we had proposed and do everything we wished for him to do. William Clark. It happened unfortunately for us this evening that Shabano was at the helm of this pea robe instead of Dreher, who had previously steered her. Shabano cannot swim and is perhaps the most timid waterman in the world. William Clark. At daylight this morning, we were informed that the two horses of our interpreter, Shabano, Toussaint Shabano, were missing. William Clark. How do we know that he said this? Well, we could take a look at his journal. He actually wrote this, and as you can see, you can see the words interpreter and Chabonneau right here. William Clark's journal is a first-hand account of Toussaint Charbonneau because it describes an experience from his personal experience. It's also a primary source because it is an original source from a diary that was created at a certain time. Meriwether Lewis also provided a first-hand account, a primary source, about Toussaint Charbonneau. In his diary, he wrote, I was out of patience with the folly of Chabonneau, who had not sufficiently sagacity to see the consequences which would inevitably flow from a movement of the Indians. Meriwether Lewis. Here's a really good example of a secondary source. It's a secondary source because the National Park Service has looked at a lot of primary sources and came to a narrative that they've constructed themselves. Among my many travels to the West, I have often thought about Toussaint Charbonneau, Lewis, Clark, Sacagawea, and I used empathy. I put myself in their shoes and experienced the experiences that they experienced, if that makes sense. What was it like to go through a physical barrier, a physical gateway, to stay at Fort Clatsop? Well, I had to experience that for myself. I had to look at the primary sources available to make my own conclusions and evaluate Toussaint Charbonneau, Lewis, Clark, and Sacagawea. Because Sacagawea is no longer alive, I can't ask her firsthand what she thought of Toussaint Charbonneau, so I'm left with the diaries and the journal entries of Lewis and Clark. Since I was not at Fort Clatsop firsthand, I did not experience it with my own eyes, I can go back to Fort Clatsop and talk to some of the guides and use some second-hand information that they've learned from other materials to learn about how Toussaint Charbonneau lived at Fort Clatsop in Astoria, Oregon. What kind of clothes did Toussaint Charbonneau wear? Well, since I wasn't there firsthand, I can go back and look at some second-hand relics some ideas that we think that Toussaint Charbonneau wore, some of the things that he constructed with his own bare hands. 
We know this from the journals of Lewis and Clark. I wonder what Toussaint Charbonneau thought about when he saw the Pacific Ocean for the very first time. What did the air smell like? Well, to figure it out for myself, I had to go there myself. That's a second-hand experience. If I want to find out some information about Toussaint Charbonneau, I could always go to Wikipedia, but let me express some warning. Anyone can edit an article on Wikipedia. This article is a great example. Take a look at what's included in this box right here. The box says, this article needs additional citations for verification. Please help improve this article by adding citations to reliable sources. Unsourced material may be challenged and removed. That's from April 2007. So there's a lot of information within this article that may or may not be true. How do we know what Toussaint Charbonneau looked like? This is Edgar S. Paxson's idea of what he may look like. This is a painting called Lewis and Clark at Three Forks. It's an oil on canvas from 1912. And this is an awful long time after the Lewis and Clark expedition. So how are we to know what Paxson knows about what Toussaint Charbonneau looks like? I know that this painting is from a reputable source. Well, how do I know that? Well, this is from Montana.gov, and any .gov website is usually legitimate. Now, if you want to know even more details about this painting, you can click on More Details. We know that the name of the painting is Lewis and Clark at Three Forks, but if you look directly underneath the painting, you see that it's, it says something, yeah, there you go, Charbonneau painting cropped, and cropped means cut from. So that's interesting. If I wanted to find out more, I could go to the Montana Historical Society for more information. If you want to verify information included within the Wikipedia Toussaint Charbonneau article, you can look at the very bottom. All of the sources that were used to compile the information about Toussaint Charbonneau are included here. So information that you may find about Toussaint Charbonneau, if it comes from a source, it'll be located at the very end of that source. Take a look at this number three. What does it say? Hmm, what does it say here? Lewis Merriweather, Clark William, Gary Moulton, November 4th, 1804 entry in the Journals of Lewis and Clark Expedition. This is a first-hand account, and it's also a primary source. It's straight from the horse's mouth. Oh, I found this on Toussaint Charbonneau at www.lewis-clark.org. Typically, if a web address has a .edu, a .org, or a .gov, usually it's a really reliable source. So we'll look into this. Don't believe everything that you read. Check this out. I found this on the internet about Toussaint Charbonneau. Larry Sabula says, Didn't Charbonneau beat his wife on the trip and had to be ordered to stop by Lewis? Lizette did survive. There is a marriage record on her in St. Louis. I think she disappears from history after that. Hmm. Francis Hunter had this reply. On August the 14th, 1805, William Clark noted in his journal that he rebuked Charbonneau for striking his woman at their dinner. There is no other record in the journals of Charbonneau beating his wife, but unfortunately it wouldn't have been an uncommon event at that time. As a woman and Native American, Sacagawea had little social status of her own among white people. Seeing is definitely not believing. I saw this image when I typed in Toussaint Charbonneau, but I thought it looked very peculiar. So I went to another site and it definitely wasn't Toussaint Charbonneau, it was Buffalo Bill Cody. Thanks so much for watching. Feel free to check out our Teachers Pay Teachers store, follow us on Instagram, like us on Facebook, and check out our Pinterest page. Hop on over to our YouTube channel where you can check out many exciting videos like the one that you've just seen. And hop on over to our blog at www.bowtieguyandwife.com. See you later.